Hello everybody, Francesco here from Movement Monastery and today we're going to be going over the Tinsica. Now I'm going to show you the direct progressions on how to get this move if you have all the prerequisites prior to learning this. But at the end of the video, or more close to the half end of the video, I'm going to give you drills to work on if you don't have or are missing certain parts of this. So it's pretty important if you watch the whole rest of the video because if you're having trouble with any of the things that progress you into the skill, those might answer your questions, all right? Anyway, let's get started. Now the Tinsuka is a move that does require a bit of flexibility. However, I have like the very, very low end of that flexibility. So I'm still able to do this move. If you're someone who's a little bit more flexible than I am or around my same type of flexibility, then you're probably gonna be able to do this move. So just keep that in mind. It is kind of complicated coordination wise, but in the end, if you have the prerequisites and the flexibility and some of the coordination stuff, you should be able to get this move down pretty well. So first thing you want to be able to have is a decent or okay bridge. You want to be able to at least get your hips a little bit above the knees when you push up, and you want to be able to have your elbows mostly extended. So from here, my hips have to go up a little bit above my knees. I should be able to walk my feet back close to my hips, and I should be able to rock back and forth like this, okay? If you can't do that rocking motion back and forth, and can't feel that your hips are popping up and your shoulders are going back and forth, then I highly recommend being able to do that first because it's going to really make it difficult for you to get this. You might end up doing some weird, I don't know, front handspring, diabolical abomination of a skill. I don't know what it'll be called, but it won't be this. The second thing is you want to be able to have a cartwheel. So your cartwheel, okay, of course, going through this way. But for this one in particular, you can actually do cartwheel that travels sideways or strides facing sideways. It'll actually look better for this particular type of skill that we're doing here. So it can actually go sideways like that and it doesn't have to reach directly underneath you. It can reach a little bit behind you which is one of the tricks of the skill. I can actually reach behind me a little bit like that and it makes it a little bit easier to do this skill. And you'll see what I mean because if I was to actually go through the whole thing, watch where my hands plant from here. Okay, you see that my hands a little bit reach behind me as I come down to stand up. So, you have to have your carpet. Now, next thing is you want to be able to have a handstand fall into a bridge position. Handstand fall to bridge position. The next thing you want is to be able to do a handstand and when you're falling down to bridge, switch to one arm. Now make sure that the leg you are kicking up to start your handstand, that's the hand you have to switch to. If you switch to the other side, it's gonna change the way your balance goes coming out of the skill, so just make sure to keep an eye on that. The next skill you wanna be able to do is called cartwheel to bridge. Now this cartwheel is going to be one that's facing sideways. You don't want to face forward for this one. You want to do a cartwheel that faces sideways. And then when you come out of it, you're going to end up in this crab walk, half crab, half bridge position, facing 90 degrees to the side. So if I'm bringing my left hand down first, I'm going to turn 90 degrees to the left. If I'm going to my right hand down first, I'm going to turn 90 degrees to my right, coming out of the seal. <laughs> Example of that, if I go this way, up and over, I come out of the seal that way. Okay, if I go the other way, up and over, I can have the skill that way, okay? So that should be drilled into your head, be able to do cartwheel, and fall out to bridge, or three-legged crab. The thing about the skill that makes it look cool is you're starting sideways, and then you finish facing 90 degrees of a turn from where you started, okay? So that would mean that if I'm here, coming this direction, I'm going toward my left shoulder, that means I'm going to twist 90 degrees and finish my left shoulder toward that side right there. Watch it again, I'll show you what I mean. Starting forward here, and then I come around and I'm facing that way to finish, right? You might have also noticed in that skill that I lift 
my other arm up. That's very important. That's going to be crucial for the rest of this skill. The one thing that differentiates a tinsica in gymnastics from a cartwheel is that the hands are staggered. That's the one thing that changes it up. And also with Capoeira in particular, since you're going sideways, one hand's going to come up anyway before the other. If you kept them both down, it would turn into a different skill. Okay, next thing I want you to do. I want you to go from your side cartwheel, fall into your three-legged trap, and then you're going to rock forward and stand up. So what does that look like? From here, I come over, switch my other arm, I fall my three-legged trap. From here, I'm going to rock my hips forward past my heels. Okay, I'm going to push up and I'm going to try to stand up arching. That is how you come out of the skill. If you don't do that, if you're not pushing the hips open, you're just going to collapse down to the floor. Your hips will drop back and you'll sit down, which will probably happen the first like 100 times you do the skill anyway. And it took me several months to develop this. I actually developed this skill over quarantine. So it took me about two months to kind of get familiar with this skill, just to give you an idea of the work that you're about to be involved in. All right, here's the next part of the skill you have to understand. You have to learn how to hinge back on one leg, lift the other one up in the air for counterbalancing, whilst touching the floor and then pushing back off. Whilst is a fun word, isn't it? So from here, I'm gonna lean back and my hip is over the top of my foot. Okay, I'm hinging here. Most people can do this okay. And then when you come back to the bottom, you might have to have your toe come off, heel come off the ground, balance on the toe, and then I want you to tap back with one of your hands. You notice I have a surface back here to reach to. If you can reach to the floor, by all means, please do that. I can't do that when I practice one leg. I need something a little bit higher to do it. I'm just not bent, I'm just not bent that way. Not built that way, not bent that way. So I have something about this high to work with. You can regress down from a higher position, and then lower, and then eventually, whoop, you touch down and come back up again. So that's another important part, is being able to hinge back, feel that, and feel in the counterbalance of the leg lifting up into the air. Train both sides, remember to train both sides. Okay, now here's a couple of things with this skill that are going to make it crucial for you to land it. First of all, after you come out of the cartwheel, you have to make sure that you're thinking about jamming that foot down into the floor underneath your hip. There's no way for you to stand up if your foot doesn't go underneath your hip, unless you do the trick that I did, which is that counterbalancing leg, because of my inability to keep my hips forward, I start falling backward, but I found a little technique to fix that. When I come out of it, I swing my leg back behind me, and it makes, keeps me from falling backward. You can see that if I do this in place. Watch what I mean by that. Watch this leg from here. I bring it back behind me there, right? Let me go one more time. I kind of slipped on that one. Here we go. You saw that I'm using that step back position to make it possible for me to stand up. Otherwise, I would kind of just fall backward to that side. But depending on your flexibility, you might actually be able to keep that leg lifted and just stand up and come out like that. And I hope you can because that will probably look a lot better. But if you can't, just realize you have that leg to swing back behind you to keep you from falling backward. So with all those things that I talked about, the progressions from the handstand falling to the bridge, the ability to come out of the cartwheel to bridge, the crab walk position, pushing to standing up, and then also knowing how to counterbalance on your leg and push up, with all that together, you should have enough knowledge to be able to do the full skill. Some of the things that are gonna hinder you from this is what we're gonna talk about now. The first thing I found out is that with this particular skill, because you're twisting, you have to really fight that twist at the end, otherwise you fall to the side weird. Because I'm turning this way, if I'm not actively trying to push and fight against that twist, I'm gonna end up falling to the other side. It's a very weird concept, but really it has a lot to do with your ability to make your leg turn this way. So this like external, this internal rotation of the hip, and pulling back like that, that position, being able to turn yourself into that, it's very important. And you learn that by doing the touchdown thing I talked about. That should help you figure out that position, but if not, you might have to actively think about it. So externally rotating that leg like that. Another really funny looking drill that you can do for that is just swing your leg up behind you 
while turning that leg out to the side, kind of like you're playing Pakistan, and then reaching up behind you with the other arm. So you're kind of doing this motion like that. Right, so you're getting this hip extension, leg out to the side, and internal rotation at the same time. That's kind of what you go through when you do the full skill. Um, but it's for a split second. If you can hold that position, lift it in the air without falling down, great. That's what I have to do to get over and land on the skill. Um, another area you're probably gonna have to focus on is trying to get a little bit more extension in your shoulders. You can do that by getting one of these things called a plexus wheel. Of course, you can just work on your bridges by themselves, but I found this was a better way to isolate that in particular. So I just put this behind me. I'm gonna, it's a circle, you can get it. I found this at the thrift store for like $8. They sell for like $20 or $30 online. So from here, I'm gonna come back and grab with my hands, and then I'm going to come out as far as I can. And when I get to a spot that's like, okay, that's good, then I'm gonna breathe about five times. There's a couple of other exercises you can do with it, but I found that to be very useful for me. Another one that I thought was really good was going up against the wall and going into a seal stretch with your toes up like that, knees down and hands by your side here, and then pushing up as hard as you can and trying to keep your feet apart. Don't let them come together. Let them come apart so you're pushing out and lifting up and back toward your body while trying to push your hips down toward the floor. So that's number two that I found to be quite useful. Um, I also did a lot of FRC work where I was trying to strengthen that end range to give myself a lot of reminders that my body could hold weight in that position. One more flexibility drill I did to help me with the tinsuka was a lunge while reaching toward the leg that's going backward. So most of the time I do these lunges where I'm here and twisting across that way, but I found that with this particular skill, that it helped me more if I would reach toward the back leg going that way. I would train the muscles over here to know that I have to really twist and open up to be able to do that skill at the end. And if you watch the video on the slow motion, you'll see that coming out of the skill, I'm really expressing that position coming out of it. Um, so I think it's very crucial that you look at your skills you're trying to accomplish see the positions that require the most strength in them or that you need to be familiar with and then work on stretches in those positions or strengthening areas like that in that position. That position that I was in stretching wise was stretching my hip flexor while at the same time, I'm actually, when I twist to the side, I'm actively working on these twisting muscles here to make my body reach back and hold that position. So it's kind of a two for work there, right? Anyway, that's all I have for you guys. If you liked what was going on here, please hit the thumbs up button. Please comment below if you want to show me any of your videos of you doing the Tinsica. If you want some feedback on yours, feel free to send me a link uh, to that video and I'll give you the best feedback that I can. Also, please remember to subscribe. I'm going to be having more videos up regarding acrobatics, tricking, parkour, dance, all different types of things, flexibility, strengthening, skill work, you name it, even maybe a little bit of nutritional, yummy, tasty stuff that I think is really important for everybody. All in all, you have a great day. I hope to see you all soon. And next time, I want to see your great tinsicas, but I want to see them on both sides. Y'all have a great day.